Hey guys, I'm Theobald Hedman and you're watching Southern Ingenuity. In this video, I'm gonna be making a tool kit for tramming in the spindle on a milling machine. It's gonna consist of a specially designed holder for the indicator and an adjustable flat plate that I can use as the surface from which to indicate. And in the typical Southern Ingenuity style, I'm gonna be using some scrap material for the project, including a piece of material that's over 45 years old that I salvaged from a not so typical source. So stay tuned and we'll get started. In one of my previous videos, I documented how I transported my Bridgeport milling machine from the location where I bought it back to my shop. We had to tilt the head of the machine so that it would fit through the doorway in order to get it out of the building and onto the trailer. After getting the machine set up in my shop, I trammed in the spindle using the table as the indicating surface. I had the x-axis to within about a thousandth of an inch over a six inch diameter, or so I thought. Now for those who don't know, Tramming in the spindle means getting the spindle of the machine perpendicular to the table or work surface. By attaching to the spindle a precision measuring tool called an indicator, you can rotate the spindle and measure the points along its path. If the measurements are the same all the way around, then the spindle is perpendicular to the table. One day while using a large diameter cutter, I noticed that it was throwing larger than expected chips from the trailing side as it passed over the part and I knew then that it wasn't trammed in correctly. So I checked the spindle again, and I found that it was out by about seven and a half thousandths over a six inch diameter. So either the head had moved, or I didn't get an accurate reading the first time, or possibly some combination of the two. I'll be using this indicator with the tool kit instead of the test indicator that I used previously. The plunger on this one has a larger surface area, and it's located on the back side of the dial. Using this smooth aluminum plate as an indicator surface will allow me to rotate the spindle 360 degrees without having to cross over the T-slots. It'll also provide a more consistent surface than the machine table itself, which has accumulated numerous small nicks, dings, and scratches over the years. I start out by cleaning a piece of 3 quarter inch diameter bar stock before cutting off a piece approximately 3 inches in length. Then I machine both ends of the part smooth and square. Clamping the chuck onto a half inch dowel pin that's been secured in the spindle effectively aligns the center of the chuck with the center of the spindle. This allows me to drill a hole straight through the center of the bar stock. After positioning the super spacer chuck in the horizontal position, I swap out the index plates. The plate with four notches allows me to quickly and accurately position and lock the chuck in 90 degree intervals. With four small flats cut into the end of the part, I drill a quarter inch hole for mounting the indicator. Then I rotate the part 90 degrees to drill and tap a hole with a quarter 28 thread. This will be for a set screw to lock the indicator in position.
With the indicator oriented and secured in the holder in this position, it can be used for tramming in a vise or for locating and positioning workpieces. Well now we'll move on to the indicating plate. It's a piece of one half inch aluminum that will sit on top of the vise and provide a surface that allows the indicator to rotate unimpeded in a full 360 degree circle. This will facilitate accurate tramming of the spindle in both the X and the Y axes. I drill and tap four holes in the plate, each with a quarter 28 thread. These will be for making minute adjustments to get the plate perfectly flat relative to the bottom of the ram. As you can see here, the plate tends to move or shift as the adjustment bolts are rotated. I need something to hold the plate steady but still allow for the adjustments. And I think I've got just the right thing for this out behind my shop. This, ladies and gentlemen, is what's left of a 1978 F600 box truck. I'm going to use the rubber from this old motor mount to hold the plate steady on top of the vise. Pop off. And there it goes. Woo! Come on. There you go. After separating the rubber from the metal, I trim away the excess to leave a square about three inches by three inches by one inch. Then I clean the surface to remove any remaining rust, dirt, debris, or decayed rubber. This small piece of aluminum is slightly longer than the rubber block. It will be attached to one side of the block while the indicating plate is attached to the other. The vise will clamp onto this aluminum strip, thus securing the plate to the vise. As you can see here, the rubber provides flexible resistance against the plate. It holds the plate steady on top of the vise, but still allows it to be adjusted to get it parallel with the ramp. I can use the indicator in this position to get the plate perfectly parallel with the ramp. This ensures an accurate reading while tramming the spindle.
Once the plate is properly adjusted, I can reposition the indicator and tram the spindle in both the X and the Y axes. Now, just let me say for the record that I am by no means an experienced machinist, and I'm not claiming to be. You know, I've got that machine simply as a hobby. I'm still learning a lot of the different tricks and techniques for doing quality machine work. I'm sure there's better ways to tram in a spindle, and I know that there's products out there specifically designed for doing that. But I get a lot of satisfaction out of making stuff like this. And now, I've got a tool that I can use for years to come. So with that being said, I'd love to hear how some of you old pros out there tram in your spindle or your vise. So if you would, be sure to let me know that in the comments. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. And if you haven't already, be sure to click the subscribe button because i got some more videos on the way. So until next time, I'm Theobald Hedman. Thanks for watching Southern Ingenuity.